Hey guys, it's Justine. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about cyanotypes. They're super fun, super easy, and you can do them at home. So let's get started. Cyanotypes are a super early form of printmaking. They work by painting a photosensitive chemical right on the paper and then putting an object right on top. Then the light, is, the light activates the print. The developer is just gonna be water on this, so in terms of chemicals, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. If you would rather not work with chemicals, if you have kids, if you're trying to do this at home, um, that's okay too. They sell pre-treated paper that you can buy um, at your local craft store. I'll link it down below as well. All right, so the materials for this project are pretty simple. I'm using this cyanotype kit by Jack which I'll link below. I have some leaves and, and botanicals that I foraged. I have a bin that I'm going to use to develop. I just want to make sure this is going to be big enough for the maximum size print that I want to do in there. And then I have my paper. Just a really quick note on paper. I'm going to be using a printmaking paper that can withstand going into a bath of water a few times. Um, you want to kind of steer away from flimsier paper like computer paper or newsprint just because you want it to be able to hold up. Um, I've also done this on paper bags. You can also use mixed media paper. I'll link some options below, but just keep in mind you want it to be able to like really withstand and, and keep its, its shape. The awesome thing about this kit is everything comes pre-mixed in a powder form in these bottles. Um, what you want to do is 24 hours before you want to do your project, you just want to fill these bottles up with water, shake them, and then leave them to sit for 24 hours. They have a pretty long shelf life as long as they're not mixed together. So when you're ready to start your project, just keep that in mind. Okay, so this part you actually have to do in a dark room because the chemicals are light sensitive, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what I did. So you're gonna mix part A and part B together, and then you're gonna paint it onto the surface that you're working on. It could be paper, fabric, whatever. You can paint the entire sheet of paper, but sometimes I like to leave a little white border around the edge so you can tell that it's handmade. And once you have them done, you just wanna set them and leave them to dry. I left mine overnight. Once your surfaces are prepped and dried, you can bring them to your workspace. You just wanna make sure you, you don't expose them to the sun until you're ready to print. So I just laid mine flat, put my leaf on top of it, and sandwiched it with a piece of glass. I left mine out in the sun for about 10 minutes, but it was a super sunny day. You could probably leave it out for up to half an hour. The longer you leave it out, the bluer it's gonna get. While those prints are soaking up the sun, you can go ahead and grab that bucket that I mentioned earlier and fill it with cool water. I actually added a splash of hydrogen peroxide to mine to get the blue to come out a little bit more, but you totally don't have to do that. Okay, and now for the fun part. You just take your piece of paper and slip it into that bath real quick. The quicker you can get it into that water, the better. You just don't want it to catch too much sun on its way in. Make sure while it's in that bath of water that you're just kind of agitating it by shaking the bucket. That way the chemicals that are on the paper will rinse off and it'll leave just the print. And that's pretty much it. Once I had my print kind of fully developed, I just let it out to dry. Um, it's gonna keep getting darker as it dries. As you're printing, you'll notice that the water is going to turn a little bit yellow. Just after every five prints, make sure to switch it out for some fresh water. Okay, let's keep going. You can do this project on literally anything. Brown paper bags, regular watercolor paper, even fabric. I even tested it on some scrap wood because why not? You can do all sorts of things with cyanotypes, including just continuing to make your own photosensitive paper. Um, and if you have access to large negatives or a large format camera, you can use those negatives right on top of the paper as well. Or if you wanted to just print a photo in black and white on a transparency, you could also use that as a negative to make multiple blueprints of that same photo. Cyanotypes are also, fun fact, where architectural blueprints get their name because they're such an easy and quick way of making multiple prints of something that architects used to just draw on transparencies whatever changes they would be making in their drawings or their plans and they would send that off to the printer and that's why architectural blueprints look the way they do. 
At least, they used to. Now we do everything on the computer. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. If you like these videos and you want to see more, let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.